So you finally found that perfect house or the land that you've been looking for to build your dream home on. We found a new home. But... There are some restrictions. Restrictions? Some restrictions apply. Restrictions? You don't want any restrictions. You can't expect me to accept all these stupid restrictions. Restrictions? Of course. I shall obey your restriction. But most people hate restrictions. I love restrictions. <laughs> I mean, if this is my house, it's my land, I, I should just be able to say... Now get off my land. Right? Does every piece of property have deed restrictions? Are they always the same? If I have acres and acres of land, can I do what I want with it? Stick around because if you're buying a new place, you definitely don't want to overlook the deed restrictions. <laughs> I'm Andy with Weikert Realtors, the Andrews Group, right here in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time stopping by, please like and subscribe down below if you find any of this information helpful. So this week I had the opportunity to walk several large acreage properties for clients. And as I was doing my research on these parcels of land, it got me thinking that I should share with you one of the things that you should always consider not only when buying land but also when buying any house and that is deed restrictions so what exactly are deed restrictions well first of all don't get deed restrictions confused with zoning ordinances or zoning restrictions deed restrictions typically come from a previous owner and there are several common ways that deed restrictions are created one very common place that you'll find deed restrictions is in an HOA or a homeowners association for a subdivision. Typically that developer or builder will put deed restrictions in place so that way aesthetically the entire neighborhood flows together. So you're not going to have one house here or one house there that totally stands out like a sore thumb. Not only to keep things cosmetically uniform throughout the neighborhood but also just for their own peace of mind that your neighbor's not going to put up a 12 foot fence or decide to start a dog kennel business in their backyard and you've got 25 barking dogs next door. Another common occurrence for deed restrictions is when a landowner subdivides that land into smaller parcels and sells them off and they don't want to see their family's farmland or their particular plot of property even though they're selling it, even though they won't own it anymore, it is their right and prerogative to restrict what can be done with these lots once they've been subdivided and sold off. So simply put, deed restrictions limit what you can and can't do with your home on a given property. And they can be established by a previous homeowner, a developer, a builder, or a homeowners association. One important thing to realize about deed restrictions is that once they're in place, they can be very difficult, if not impossible, to remove. So the answer to why deed restrictions, typically it's for the benefit of the community. It establishes the ground rules so not only you, but your neighbors know what they can and can't expect to be allowed to do or build on their property. One big question is, does every piece of property have deed restrictions? And the answer is no. Not every piece of land, not every home, not every property has deed restrictions. So you may likely see advertised, especially if it's a home with significant acreage or a piece of land that is advertised to be able to build something on, you may see verbiage in a listing that says no restrictions or no deed restrictions. Now that doesn't mean you toss zoning and building codes out the window, but what it does mean is that on that particular piece of property, there are no deed restrictions. So deed restrictions are not zoning ordinances. They're also not HOA rules. So there can be other rules that you need to abide by for your particular piece of property that don't fall under these deed restrictions. But typically the deed restrictions can be found on the deed for the property. And here in Middle Tennessee, they look something like this. 
Here are some deed restrictions to look at. This is from a document that was dated 1987, most likely done on a typewriter. Obviously, more recent deed restrictions, they'll look like a clean PDF, but this came straight from a document from 1987, and those rules run with the land. No matter if you buy this and sell it to someone else, you don't get to change these rules. These deed restrictions run with the land. You may also run into the term CCRs, which stands for Conditions, Covenants, and Restrictions. Here are some common ones that you'll see on deed restrictions when land is being sold with the assumption that someone is going to buy it to build a house. If restrictions are applied, typically you'll see a minimum square footage. So in other words, they will restrict the size of house that you're going to be allowed to build here. On this one, you can see that you have to build a house that's a minimum of 1,200 finished square feet. Another common deed restriction is if you're going to build a house, what materials you can, you can or can't use to build that house. As you look down the list on this one, you'll see some restrictions of things you cannot build or cannot do on this property. You can see on this one, there are restrictions that no temporary buildings or shacks, partially completed buildings can be used for human occupancy. Keep in mind the why for deed restrictions is for the benefit of the community, or they should be for the benefit of the community. They're not just rules to make life difficult for you. They're typically rules and regulations set in place to benefit the community. For example, you can see on this one, it says no junk of any nature or description shall be allowed to accumulate or remain upon a lot. This just alleviates any question that your neighbor is gonna end up with a junkyard next door. They're not allowed to, according to the deed restrictions. Deed restrictions also let you know if you're allowed to park a trailer. This will be our new home, boys. Or set a modular home, which could be a single wide, a double wide, or a triple wide modular home. The deed restrictions are going to let you know if there are any restrictions for the type of home you're allowed to put on that property. Another big one that the deed restrictions are gonna inform you of has to do with animals. Yeah! what kind of animals am I allowed to have on this property? Now, these deed restrictions are not exclusive to large pieces of land. Of course, if you're looking for five or 10 acres, you might wonder if you're allowed to have a horse there or if you're allowed to have chickens there or if you're allowed to have goats there. But some deed restrictions are in place for much smaller units, including townhouses, condos, single family residents that have virtually no backyard, you need to check those deed restrictions in addition to zoning ordinances to find out what type of animals you're allowed to have. <coughs> On some smaller properties like townhouses and condos, in addition to homeowner association rules, there may also be deed restrictions on what type of pets you're allowed to have in that house. So deed restrictions are not something you wanna overlook just because you're buying a house versus buying land. But take a look at this one. This rule is pretty common or something like it. If you're out shopping for land or a house that has some land associated with it, this one says specifically that in no instance shall any lot be used for commercial chicken, goat or swine production. There are all kinds of variations of this rule. So for example, look at this one. This one has some similar rules, no junkyards or unsightly trash, but look at the words they use about the animal restrictions on this property. No swine or fowl of any kind shall be allowed. So that means whether it's a commercial facility or not, you are not allowed to have pigs or birds of any kind on this property. <laughs> Which is interesting because if you look at the words in this one, this one specifically indicates you can't have commercial chicken egg 
or swine production. Well, I'm not producing chickens, I'm producing eggs. This one says you can't have an above ground pool on your property. And here's one that lets you know just in case you had a plan on making moonshine that you're not allowed to have a still on your property. Here's one that lets you know you can't have any beehives on your property. And here's one that might catch someone off guard if you don't catch it on the front end. On this property it says there are no trampolines, no basketball goals, or any other recreational equipment visible from the street. So again, these are not HOA rules. HOA rules can change pretty easily if everybody in the homeowner association agrees that it's, you know, not a great rule. For example, if somebody keeps their Christmas lights up too long, if the entire neighborhood has a petition and agrees, look, it's okay if we have our Christmas lights up until the second week of January, so be it. Deed restrictions are a lot more difficult to get rid of. So please make sure that you or your agent look to find out, first of all, if there are deed restrictions on your property before you buy it. And second of all, what exactly are those restrictions? I hope this information is helpful to you. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe down below and turn on that notification bell and you'll get notified when I post new videos. If you have any questions, leave a comment for me down below, or you can email me at andy at andyluskhomes.com. I look forward to seeing you next time. I hope you learned something. God bless. Bye-bye.